Alrighty, what is on everybody? Pretender here, back with another Honkai Star of video, and today I'm going to be providing a full build guide on the boy Auto Apocalypse. Now I'm playing Luotra. Luotra will be a part of the 2.1 rerun banners. He will be the first batch alongside Akron. And so today I'm going to be going over his kit, Eidolon's best light guns, best relics, and the stats you want to have on the relics. Luotra is still one of the best healers, if not the best healer in the game, just because the output he has is insane. And so today I'm going to show you how to make Luotra broken. I do plan on making a guide for the upcoming 2.1 characters. I've already made a full build guide for Akron. Now you're watching the Luotra one, and in the near future, I will have one for Evan Shuren, and I will have one for Jing Lu. So stay tuned for that. Before I get into the video, guys, to drop a sub, turn on the bell icon for future videos like this, along with other types of guides, summons, showcases, news, all that kind of stuff. And let's get straight into the video. So Luotra is an imaginary character following the path of abundance. His basic attack deals imaginary damage equal to 100% of Luotra's attack to a single enemy. His skill, after using his skill, Luotra immediately restores the target ally's HP equal to 60% of Luotra's attack plus 800. Meanwhile, Luotra gains one stack of Abyss Flower. So yes, he is a healer that scales off attack. When any ally's HP percentage drops to 50% or lower, an effect equivalent to Lotus skill will immediately be triggered and applied to this ally for one time without consuming skill points. This effect can be triggered again after two turns. What this means is if you are in a battle and you get hit and let's say you are running him with someone like Blade, the enemy hits Blade and he drops below 50% of his HP. If you haven't already used it, Lotus will immediately proc his skill without using a skill point, healing him and cleansing him. Ultimate, removes one buff from all enemies and deals all enemies imaginary damage equal to 200% of Luotra's attack. At the same time, Luotra gains one stack of Abyss Flower. Now is Talent, which explains what Abyss Flower is. When Abyss Flower reaches two stacks, Luotra consumes all stacks of Abyss Flower to deploy a field against the enemy. When any enemy in the field is attacked by an ally, the attacking ally's HP is immediately restored by an amount equal to 18% of Luotra's attack plus 240. This field's effect lasts for two turns. When Luotra is knocked down, the field will be dispelled. His technique, after the technique is used, the talent will immediately be triggered at the start of the next battle. So what that means is if you do pop his technique before a battle, the cycle of life field will already be up. His bonus ability, first one, the chance to resist crowd control debuffs increases by 70%. Second bonus ability, when any field in the ally is attacked by an ally, all allies except the attacker restore HP equal to 7% of Luota's attack plus 93. So the attacker, if you are attacking in the field, still gets HP restored because of this, but your entire team now gets a smaller version of that, healing your entire team. So with the field down, Luota is indeed a AoE healer. This is why he has some of the highest healing output in the game, just because putting it on the field makes it to where everyone can be healed while attacking which is very good offensive healing is really nice and he also just heals a bunch from his skills being proc and anything third bonus ability when the skill effect is triggered removes one diva from a target ally i did say cleanse earlier that's not a part of his skill that's actually a part of this bonus ability so when you have this this also does apply to when you drop below 50 percent because it is equivalent so when you do drop below 50 percent and the skill procs or you just use the skill on someone it will cleanse them from a diva Going over his Eidolons real quickly, his first Eidolon, while the field is active, attack of all allies increases by 20%. Second bonus ability, when his skill is triggered, if the target's ally's HP is lower than 50%, Luotra's outgoing healing increases by 30%. If the target ally's HP is at 50% or higher, the ally receives a shield that can absorb damage equal to 18% of Luotra's attack plus 240, less than for two turns. If you have E2, he can provide a shield now. His E4, when Luotra's field is active, enemies become weakened and deal 12% less damage. And his final Eidolon, when ultimate is used, is a 100% fixed chance to reduce all enemies all type res by 20% for two turns. So Eidolon's very solid, every single one of them is very nice to have. Moving on to his best light cones, his best light cone will be his signature light cone. What it does is increases the wearer's attack by 24%. After the wearer uses an attack for each different enemy target the wearer hits, regenerates 3 energy. Each attack can regenerate energy up to 3 times this way. After the wearer uses their ultimate, all allies gain 12 speed for one turn. This one's his best one because it does give him some attack percent and his healing does scale off his attack. And so with the attack stick, you do get more healing out of it. Being able to regenerate more energy is always nice. And now his ultimate, when you do proc it, you're not only getting the removal of a buff against the enemy, you also give your entire team a 12 speed bonus, which 12 speed is quite a lot. So this light gun is his best one. Another close option is Huo Huo's signature light cone, and what it does is increases the wearer's energy regeneration rate by 12%. When an ally uses their ultimate, the wearer restores HP for the ally currently with the lowest HP percentage by an amount equal to 10% of the healed ally's max HP. 
When the wearer provides healing for an ally, increases the healed ally's attack by 2.4%. This effect can stack up to 5 times and last for 2 turns. So, giving him more energy regeneration rate is always nice. Now with this ultimate being able to provide some healing, and now when you do heal with Luotra, giving the healed allies attack is very nice, that can also stack. So this Lycone does also provide a lot. Another pretty good 4 star option is perfect timing and what it does is increases the wearer's effect res by 16% and increases outgoing healing by an amount that is equal to 33% of effect res. Outgoing healing can be increased this way up to 15%. And at R5 you get a 32% effect res bonus and the cap for how much outgoing healing bonus you can have from this is now 27%. This Lycone is really nice because more effect press is always great because you don't want your healers to get CC'd. If your healers are CC'd, they can't heal your team and that's really bad. So this one overall is nice, especially increasing his overall healing potential. So overall, it is a nice Lycone. And another pretty good option actually is Multiplication. And what it does is after the wearer uses their basic attack, their next action will be advanced forward by 12%. And R5, which you'll probably have it at R5, is 20%. I say this one is fine just because... When you are using Luotra, most of the time you don't actually use his skill to heal, unless you're in a bad situation and you have skill points to spare over. For the most part, you gain the stacks from his ultimate and the automatic heal for when you drop below 50%. And then when you deploy the field, you don't really have to worry about it. And so for the most part, Luotra does attack with his basic attack a lot. And so this one is nice just because it gives you an advance forward, making you attack more, gain more energy, being able to heal more, all that kind of stuff is also just overall really good. And that's why this light cone is another option you can use. And then another less desirable option but it's still usable is the Bazo Signature Lycon and what it does is increases the wearer's max HP by 18% and outgoing healing by 12%. When the wearer heals allies, record the amount of outgoing healing. When any ally launches an attack, a random attack enemy takes additional damage equal to 36% of recorded outgoing healing value. This type of additional damage is the same type as the wearers. The additional damage is not affected by other buffs and can only occur one time per turn. I say less desirable because it does give him HP, which he... Some HP is nice, but he doesn't really need it. The outgoing healing is fine, but overall the second effect isn't that great for him. It's just an extra damage overall. It's overall, like, the light cone in general hasn't seen much value as of recently, especially with the good ones we have now. But if you do have this and you don't have any of their options, it is a usable option. Moving on to the best relics, the best option you can do for Luotra is running two piece of the passive ice set and the two piece hacker space. The four piece on the healing set is pretty bad so don't bother so the two piece increases outgoing healing by 10% and the two piece for hacker space increases speed by 6%. You can't use a 4 piece on the hacker space because you're not using the ult on an ally, his ult is an attack, so the 4 piece is useless on this. So the best one is this because you get outgoing healing, so more healing, and giving him some more speed, you want your healer to be fast, so this is also a really good option. 4 piece musketeer is a close second, and what it does is the attack increases by 12% for 2 piece, again he scales off attack so that's nice. 4 piece, the wear speed increases by 6% and basic attack damage increases by 10%. With Luotra, you're going to be using your basic attack a lot, and since you are just giving him a bunch of attack for better healing, the basic attack damage can be alright. Obviously, it's not what you want to look out for when using Luotra. The extra speed is also very nice, so you do get speed bonus from this, so Musketeers, 4-piece is another option. But overall, I would recommend rocking 2-piece of these ones right here. As for the planet ornaments, a very good planet ornament for him will be Broken Kill, and what it does is increase the wearer's effect res by 10%. When the wearer's effect res is at 30% or higher, all allies crit damage increases by 10%. Again, as I mentioned previously, effect res is really good on your healers, Luotra is the same. More effect res, the less chances he has to get CC'd. And if you do meet the threshold, giving your entire team 10% crit damage is very nice. And another option that's pretty much equally as good is the Fleet of the Ageless. What it does is increase the wearer's max HP by 12%. When the wearer's speed reaches 120 or higher, all allies attack increases by 8%. It's giving everyone an attack bonus. This does apply to Lotra himself, so more attack, so better healing. So this is also a very good option, but either or is fine. Moving on to the main stats you want to use for the relics. For the body, you want to give him outgoing healing bonus because you want to have his healing as high as possible. For the feet, you're going to want to give him speed. For the orb, you want to give him attack percent. And for the link rope, you want to give him energy regeneration rate. For the substats, you want to get speed until you hit the breakpoints, which with Luotra isn't too hard. The breakpoint is 134 or higher. Prioritize that. Pass that. Depends on what you're running. If you're running the perfect timing LC or you're running broken kill, you want to make sure you have at least 30% or higher effect res just so you can get the broken kill effect. And obviously, if you are running perfect timing, you want to have more effect res so you can heal more. But equal amount to that is attack percent. You want to have attack percent rolls just so you can get more healing out of it. 
And then past that is practically anything that is related to survivability. HP, defense is all just nice to have. But again, mainly speed till breakpoint, attack percent or effect res, and then past that is just survivability stats, HP, defense. And so yeah, that is the full build guide for Luotra. As you guys can see, it is actually pretty simple to build him. He doesn't have anything complicated. There's not like one specific thing you really, really need. Overall, Luotra is a flexible unit and is still one of, if not the best healer in the game. I hope my bro doesn't fall off anytime soon because this guy is just a menace in the story and he is my favorite character right beside Walt. Both of them are my favorite and Luotra is just a goat. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Let me know if you did and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.